I'm Adam Greenberg, reporter with SC Magazine. I'm here with Chandra McMahon, VP of Commercial Markets with Lockheed Martin. Chandra was the former Chief Information Security Officer at Lockheed Martin. Chandra, could you start by telling us a little bit about your role as Chief Information Security Officer and what you do now as VP of Commercial Markets? Absolutely. So my role currently as a leading the commercial markets line of business is to really focus on helping other chief information security officers or chief risk officers improve the cyber resilience of their company. And so what I did was, having formerly served as the chief information security officer, I had an opportunity to lead um, the corporate network defense for all of Lockheed Martin. And now what I'm focused on doing is taking the trade craft and some of the advanced tools we have and some of the cyber expertise that we've had and actually helping um, customers in what are considered critical infrastructure industries. And how do you do that? Well, we do that very capably. So specifically, we focus on a couple of things. One is helping them understand their environment and looking at it from an intelligence-driven defense perspective. That's really how Lockheed Martin goes about defending their enterprise network and what we do for our customers. So we offer a set of services that help them help to do an assessment around intelligence-driven defense, and it's really based on the cyber kill chain. In addition to that, we have a robust set of products and services that actually help companies go beyond COTS security products in terms of being able to defend against what we consider advanced persistent threat or nation state actor type threats. You mentioned the cyber kill chain. Can you explain to us a little bit about what that is and how it works? Yes. Well, the cyber kill chain was released several years ago, and it's something that we've um, been using for quite some time. And basically what it is, it's the seven steps that an adversary needs to go through in order to um, attack a network and actually achieve action on objectives. And so it's embedded throughout our processes and our tool sets. And what our analysts do is use that to analyze every advanced threat on Lockheed Martin. Then what we do is we take each of those attacks and link them together to create campaigns. And by doing that, we're able to increase the intelligence that we have about an adversary's motives, their tactics and techniques they use, and how they could be coming at us in, again in the future. So what it does is it enables us to improve our detections, as well as improve our mitigations and our defensive posture. But what I really love about it is it helps us to predict how they could come at us again. And when you're able to predict how an adversary could come at you again, you're then able to put some better defenses in place to, to stop their activity. I know when you hear intelligence uh, driven, it kind of sets off bells maybe on the executive level. Oh, I'm gonna have to understand something that I don't understand here. Is this the type of information that executives can understand? Is it accessible to them? Absolutely. At Lockheed Martin, we use our intelligence-driven defense and our cyber kill chain model at the analyst level for them to do their work on a daily basis to understand attacks. And then that reporting, the exact same reporting the analyst do, does, translates up to the executive level. So for example, my analyst can tell me every year, every day of the month, how many attacks are being made on Lockheed Martin by how many campaigns. And I'm able to translate that to my executive or my CEO on a monthly, quarterly basis and to our board of directors, at least annually and sometimes more, exactly how many campaigns are targeting Lockheed Martin, what the tactics and techniques are, and how successful we've been at defending. And so one of the things about it is, our board of directors through our CEO and chairman of the board, all the way down through my executive team down to my analysts use this. And now as we've been working with companies in the commercial space, they want the same thing. Because what it enables you to do is to say, we've invested a lot of money in specific security infrastructure to defend our enterprise. And by using the cyber kill chain, you're able to figure out which of those security products are really working effectively based on the attacks coming at, at you, and more importantly, which ones aren't. And so we've used it internally where we I've been able to look across my spectrum of security products and what's in place, which solutions are really working and which ones aren't, and I've been able to redirect investment from a capability that wasn't working as well into maybe a future capability we might need. And that's what it's all about. It's about those future capabilities. You know as well as I do, the adversaries continue to change their tactics, and so every day that you have a set of defensive measures, the next day they're thinking about something different. And so the cyber kill chain allows you, as the adversaries change their tactics, 
The analysts are able to describe and identify additional technologies we need to be able to put in future defensive countermeasures. And so it also, not from a reporting perspective, but also from an application perspective and from an investment perspective, it all kind of ties together nicely. Well, you get a chance to look at that intelligence. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're seeing, what that data is telling you? Yes, so what we've seen over the last several years is an increase in the number of campaigns. As I shared with you, the cyber kill chain allows us to bucket attacks in the specific campaigns with specific fingerprints. So in 2008, we had 10 APT or nation state campaigns targeting Lockheed Martin. Eight of them are still around today. In 2011, there were 28, and today we're up to 44 or 45. We've also seen an increase over the last five years in um, our act, the nation state actors and cyber criminals focusing more on our supply chain, thereby going after the weakest link in the chain. And so there isn't a week or month that goes by that our Lockheed Martin cyber incident response team is having to call a supplier and say, we think you have a problem in your infrastructure because we've seen an email come from you and we know that, that it's nation state related, it has that kind of kind of fingerprints to it. So those are two of the trends that we've seen. And we, we expect as well, um, there's a lot of focus on information sharing. And so over the last three, to three years, we've, we've had to consume more intelligence reporting, whether it's reporting from the government, reporting from industry partners, or from even other industries, cross industries, getting that information in about what these other industries are seeing and pulling that in and then being able to use it to bolster our defenses. Those are just three things I'd share with you at this time. <laughs>